Hey everyone, before we get into this podcast, I just want to apologize from the bottom of my heart. I apologize because for some reason my camera just stopped recording 30 seconds into the podcast, literally before we even started. Um, And I didn't realize until it was over when I was about to turn the camera off that nothing was recorded. So you guys are just going to see an awkward image of the intro and uh, yeah, you're going to see that the entire for the entirety of this episode so i apologize but there's nothing i could do about it the content gets really really good we go into mental health and the implications that it has on everyone globally um rather than just um you know secluded to our own individual lives and where we live so uh enjoy and i apologize hopefully it won't happen again but there's no promises anyway let's get into the podcast speaking of haircuts I think I'm just going to freaking shave it all off, bro. You're not into the growing out? No, like legit shave it all off. Go like bald? Go, go, go completely bald. Why? Just well, I'm losing it. my freaking hair anyway. I might as well just do it. You should just let it last. Do you see Do you see the old picture of dad? How long he waited? Until no, he was talking? I did Bro, his John was like... <laughs> <laughs> like Stephen A, bro. Bro, I saw... Worse. Dad um, was worse than that. Logan Paul... He just did like a, a little advertisement for Prime and him and KSI went oh. bald. Yeah. And Logan actually looked really good. Like I it was he had the like caps, the cap though, thing. Cap. But I was like Oh, it inspired wow. you? It did inspire me. Yeah, but But also his face is really like chiseled. You know what they so always that means say I need to like work out a little bit and get chiseled. It only looks good when black people are bald. His, that's not true at all. <laughs> Who says that? <laughs> that's what they say. <laughs> no one says that. <laughs> But actually, when a black man go bald, he still look he good. still look good. Mm-hmm. But nice. welcome to Two Peas in a Pod podcast. I am your host Micah, with my co-host Nathan. What's up, guys? Today, we're gonna be talking about the big news that just happened, the big drop, the long-awaited five-year gap. <laughs> okay, stop. Say, act surprised. The the Kendrick Lamar, yo, Mr. Morale, and the Big Steppers. I remember back in the day when I used to put you on that Kendrick Lamar game. Okay, first you of all, about it. no, I'll you about no, the no, 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 no. We're not going to talk about that. But we're <laughs> we're going to talk about me being like the the founder of Kendrick in this family. That's not true. With At swimming all. pools, you did not find. I knew that song. <laughs> I was the one that knew what you were talking. You didn't even know. Okay, okay. Yo. Wait, tell the story from your POV. Okay. Actually, before you tell the story, once again, <laughs> the coming back, Monster for the sponsorship. Mm. Thank you so much for always got, supporting the pod. And we got Pure Life, the best water around. Yes. If you want to buy bottled water, Pure Life. It's cheap. It's not like Fiji, mm-hmm. which is super expensive. It's not worth it. This is, if you look at like st- uh, studies and stuff, cleanest water you could get. And All studies. Che- all, all. Like source sources say. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Sources say so it's the cleanest Get some water. Pure Life for sure. It's not oh, alkaline. Yeah. yeah but we're also sponsored by 100 Thieves. Shout out to Nate Shot. Big, big sponsorship. And I got all all 100 Thieves. That's what I'd be wearing. Uh, him. House of Doc. 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 Is it Doc? It might be that, actually. It might <laughs> actually be I that. I remember in art, we used to go Vincent Van Gogh. I, do, I do remember that. Do you remember that? I Mr. do remember Ziggler, that, bro, yeah. Mr. Ziggler. I do remember that. But anyway, continue the story All of right. how I founded Kendrick in this family. <laughs> All right. So basically. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Basically what happened. I can't I think drink. I might have been 12. 12 or 13, maybe 11. Mm-hmm. And Micah comes to me. or I think it's me and Vera you're talking to yeah you're talking to us and you're talking about this song and you you knew that i probably would have known the song so you asked the question you're like nathan can you tell me what song this is and i swear (laughs) verbatim this is what he does to give me a hint of what the song (laughs) is he goes And I'm like, what? And honestly, it's accurate though. Honestly, I might have done it a little better than you did it. <laughs> no, no, the, no, no, no. Now, if you know swimming pools and you you listen to the song, you're like, oh, I know what he's talking about. But me, I don't have 
it, it's not on my mind swimming pools because I already I knew it the song for a been, while. Though. It should have been. I on knew my the mind. song for a while, and I'm clueless. And weeks later, maybe months later, it just it came did. It to was me. like a couple months later. It literally it just came to me. I didn't <laughs> listen to the song. It was like I was uh, what's the term when you get um, an epiphany? It was like I had okay, an epiphany. Yeah. Literally, <laughs> boom. I was like, oh my gosh, I know the song he was talking about. Yeah, because what I did was exactly what the song was. I just didn't say the words. It wasn't, though. <laughs> That's the song. That's the song. It's the same thing. <laughs> you had zero words. Zero the, words. But the. Your melody nah, wasn't. That is like. Nah. But like, the thing was, is. It was such a loose, like, mel- how you were doing it, you couldn't tell. It was so hard to tell. That's I, no, you could. I guess you could. But you you had not You figured it there's out. A so billion you different, tell. There's a billion different songs. But I'm trying to think of. you did figure it out. So you could tell. <laughs> All right. You might be right. Exactly. This actually happened to me once other time. TJ. And you know how bad TJ is. Yeah, singing. yeah. And he's trying to explain to me. He's like, no, he's asking me what song it is because he's trying to find the song mm-hmm. and he does the song and he goes <laughs> do you know what i'm talking about <laughs> he goes okay keep going uh he goes <laughs> oh my gosh i can't even do it. he goes i'm gonna do it way better than he actually did it this sucks he goes we to find ourselves and i'm like what it wasn't like that at all what was it do you remember no i don't remember but it It was was so bad bad. and i'm trying to figure it out and then out of nowhere one day it just came to me prayer by the neighborhood i was like or pray Pray. by the neighborhood pray by the neighborhood fire song it's an amazing song but fire song sometimes people ask me songs and out of nowhere it just comes to me so what we need to do this week is make the Spotify playlist and start adding songs so You're that right. you guys can listen to the stuff that we are talking about. Yeah, we're hella and, and put you on game. On the game. No, no, no. It's not the game? It's not the game. It's put you on game. <laughs> All right, my bad. Put you on game. It is your bad. That's my bad. But anyway, getting back to Kendrick Lamar and his new album. What do you think of it? First you of all, first. I was about to ask. <laughs> yeah, I know you were. That's why I snuck it in real quick. Real quick. Um, honestly, so I feel like I was never actually the biggest Kendrick fan. Um, yep. I like everyone rates to pimp a butterfly really high. I I think Good Kid, Mad City is a lot better, like way better. I don't really like to pimp a butterfly. I don't know why. It's just just personal preference or whatever. Mm. But so yeah, I didn't have like. A crazy amount of expectations going into it but listening to it, i'm like dang bro this guy's different Dippy. and literally just off the first track um i could pull up the the track list but i think it was just it was really united really good grief. yeah united in grief i love the like, changes yes all the changes but just the overall meaning behind the song mm-hmm. and how that sing that single song ties every single song together yeah it's amazing um, amazing intro track and even like little parts of um what's the the song called where the the couple's fighting oh we cry together we cry together yeah. um like I, I feel like that song could feel like it's a little bit out of place in the in the album mm-hmm. but then the last part of the song where it's you hear the tap dancing and it says stop stop, stop ta- tap dancing yeah stop tap dancing around the conversation yeah and that just tied everything together because the guy's doing all this crazy stuff in the relationship. The girl's doing this crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. They're reacting in different ways. Mm-hmm. And it's all because of the way they grew up and grief that they went through that mm-hmm. they're, you know, acting in this way. Yeah. And I thought that was like really cool. So yeah. I would, I would rate the album freaking mad high. Like, I think it's like a nine Dude, at least, I, at least a nine. I listened so to it good. twice, um, all the way through. One at work, one I listened to at midnight, and I was like half asleep, but because I was like trying to stay up, but I was like in awe at the same time. But um, I I wasn't paying attention to every song's like meaning and lyrics. So mm-hmm. from a meaning standpoint, I I have a, a basic gist of, of a lot of the songs, 
but from just a musical standpoint like that intro track you hear the violins so in the good. back the, the like the beautiful melodies on top of those drums the Whatever. that the intro track is cra- crazy crazy song so that like hooked me right then i listened to it and you know those first four tracks it goes to n95 a lot of people like that song i um, love that song too and then die hard oh and then there's um and it's weird i i was i was listening to something and pointed this out as like the album is going through it seems like he's getting more controlled in how he's talking and how he's like speaking um like the first track he's rapping really fast there's a lot of different things um and the theory mm. was that like it's this is like his therapy yeah and he, it's like the start of his therapy is the start of the album and as the album progresses it's like him getting his mind under control and things that are going on oh my dad's yeah. walking down that is walking down what's up <laughs> sorry i had to put my dad on some game real quick exactly um okay i don't know if i saw it in that same way mm. of i like the last track mirror and it's just talk, mm. it, it just says um it, what does it say exactly but it's me, like I'm yeah sorry. yeah i choose me i'm sorry so like <clears throat> even though and i like sorry i like how he goes through his childhood too mm-hmm and all the childhood trauma and talks about his daddy issues. Yeah. And all of that affecting like the way that he, um, and he's saying like people just grief in different ways. So other people mm-hmm. would, which I've had this thought too, is like the same exact stuff could happen to a certain individual mm-hmm. and they seem just like perfectly fine. You know, they're successful. It doesn't seem like on the surface, like they have any like mental health issues, but then mm-hmm. another person who went through that same situation, all of a sudden mm-hmm. they are just like doing drugs. Yeah. They're not different successful coping. at all. Different coping. Mm-hmm. But the person who just seems like they're really successful, maybe they're just completely depressed mm-hmm. and maybe there's, they feel just really empty and they keep like doing all the this stuff to try to like, fill themselves Mm -hmm. and they just feel empty and just terrible like but you don't know on the surface yeah exactly and they could be treating their partner like trash too Mm -hmm. or you know their kids or their family or something like that yeah Uh, there's like there's so much um that goes into it Mm -hmm. um also an amazing like um message was kendrick saying kind of like i've given you guys all this information all this help but i can't save you yeah like i can't be the yo one. savior the the most fire line he said honestly on the whole album the, the out the line that stuck out the most to me yeah uh was he said oh, gosh i need to pull up the lyrics hold on <laughs> i need to pull up the lyrics because it's crazy but it was like yeah like we, what you were saying with with savior mm-hmm. and he just starts off the song talking about oh this person's not your savior this person did all this crap, but they're not your savior. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll read like the last um, four lines. Yeah. I rubbed elbows with people that was for the people. They all greedy. I don't care for no public speaking. And they like to wonder where I've been protecting my soul in the valley of silence. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was fire because yeah. that's a direct um, yeah. correlation with um, s- uh, even though I walk through the valley of the shallow death, I yeah. will fear no evil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought that was like really cool, because mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know when we walk through, when we go through like trials and tribulations, it's like those things are the things that that strengthen us the most. Even mm-hmm. then, even though we don't realize it at the time. Mm-hmm. So this guy, he talks about on the album that he was in a writer's block mm-hmm. um, for five years or or whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And he's going through this writer's block and it's probably hard for him because he's so creative. Yeah. Like he probably felt like um, he didn't really have purpose in that time or, you know, just depression or anxiety. When you have like when you're that creative and you can't create, it just leaves a gap. Mm-hmm. So I can't even imagine like what he was going through. Um, and I just I like I love that line a lot. Mm-hmm. What's your standout track? My standout track, um, I think United in Grief to me is the most standout track to me. I think that intro track is really good, but 
other than that, hmm, I don't know. What about you? So my favorite, the one I've listened to the most, at least on re- on repeat, Father Time. That yeah. song. First of all, the the drums are crazy. The drums are crazy. I, I guess I come at it more from I wasn't even focusing on the meaning uh, of that song, but obviously I know what he talks. I've listened to it the most. Um, and the message of that song is talking about having daddy issues, even when he had like a present father. And yeah. It's like a lot of people, especially in the black community, talk about daddy issues because they didn't have a father, but he did. And it's still like things that has molded and shaped, you know, how he thinks today. Yeah. So it's super interesting. Um, and I just love the song. Obviously the chorus with Sampha, really, really good. Um, yeah. Fire, fire song. It's just a fire album, dude. Purple heart. A lot of people were like, I don't really like it too much, but like that is like the melody, the intro with the, like the drop at, with the uh, piano, all the songs are really good. Honestly, the only song I don't like, and I just won't listen. Like, not that I don't like it, but I just feel like, there's no replay value to me. Yeah. Can you guess what it is? Is it that song that uh, I have to look at? I know I know exactly what you're talking about. I know exactly what you're talking you about. You don't. I don't? You don't, but you can try. Really? Yeah. Okay. I feel like this is a hot take. We we cry together? Yeah. I could see that though. That is like that's a one time listen for me. But like, like I I just won't listen it to it. It makes again. sense and it you could see you could appreciate the artwork and like how yeah. amazing that song is. Without needing to go listen to it 10, 15, 20 times. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I could see that. I don't think that's a hot take because everyone that, like, hurt, hears it is like, this is amazing. But it's yeah, not like yeah. it's amazing in a sense of, like, musically. Yeah, like, the uh, the creativity. And it, like, yeah. it just puts you in, like, that scene. Yeah, like, the you kind of feel like amazing. you're there. Yeah, the format of the song and, like, the environment it creates is amazing. But I wouldn't say like musically, you know. Yeah. It has replay value. And it's just the F U B. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh like, yeah. I just can't. Like I was laughing when I first listened to that. I was, I, I was too. I was dying. I was like, bro. what the heck? <laughs> I was like, what the? But no, it definitely was really cool. People were saying they need to make a music video to that. Yeah, I, I think that's agree. what people think are, that's going to happen. The crazy thing about that too is like it's it feels so real like that's yeah. a real conversation or like a real argument that happens you hear like the glass in the background like uh you know the ice in it shaking and everything mm-hmm. everything about that uh it's like a scene it's yeah. literally a scene and it puts you in a place so there's definitely going to be a music video if there's yeah. not that's going to be wild um but other than um united in grief i feel like my favorite track is n95 really yeah <sighs> i like Really? I know. I, I, and 95 is good. It's weird because like I felt like it was going to be one of those songs where I like it, but not like that much. Not then where I just listen to it. it a lot, but the more I've listened to it, the more yeah. I, I like it. And 95, the first time I listened to it, I was like, it was good. That's why it was a yeah. track. And yeah. then I listened to it again. I was like, okay. Like, I, like, I like the switches. Like yeah. they're yeah. Some of them are pretty subtle. Yeah. But yeah. I forget the lyrics. Count on me. Good song. That's when everything's good. Literally, Yo, every everything song is, good. is good. Everything's good. Um, you know what that does remind me? We cry together. We're gonna go back on this. Um, it was a old, while ago, uh, a J Cole song, one of his like oldest song. Uh, what is it called? Um, I don't know, but it's about him. It's it's basically a conversation between him and a girl that he got pregnant, so he has a baby mama. And he's trying to give her options because he doesn't want to keep the kid. But she's like, mm. what do you mean? And then she calls him out and says, you're you're turning into your dad and you hate that guy, basically. And he, she's Dang. like, um, but it's a, it's like kind of a sad song. It's deep. I, I'm trying to think. Oh, it's called Lost Ones. I've never heard it. Wow. Yeah. It's, a, it's like it's literally the same concept. Conversation between two people. But he does both parts. But you could tell, obviously, yeah. what it is. But that's what that We Cry Together reminded I, me of when I first Honestly, though, so... I went back and listened to J. Cole's most recent album, mm-hmm. whatever it's called, The Off Season. Yeah. Just to compare. Yeah, just to compare. And bro, Kendrick different level. Is the best rapper. Yeah. He's the best rapper. People have been saying that, but you know, five year hiatus, you know, Drake, everyone always is just talking about Drake and Drake's a great is obviously a really, really, really good writer. Yeah. But when you hear Kendrick it's just like, yeah, I think that was also the appreciation for uh, teapot, teapot, teapot. Is that what people say for tipping butterfly? 
like the acronym. Oh, probably. Instead of saying yeah, Napoleon, yeah, yeah. it's But they'll say, like, it's not even that they might have enjoyed it that much, but just, like, the artistry inside of um, To Pimp a Butterfly, I think that's what people appreciate more. Because like you said, a lot, I, there's probably a lot of people that like Good Kid, Mad City more than To Pimp a Butterfly. Yeah. But because of, like, I guess how different it feels people enjoy it more and have more respect for it this is my favorite kendrick album yeah do you did like, you listen to section 80 i've listened to everything you oh you did listen to section 80 yeah i've listened to everything like, I, like i feel like it didn't jump out at me that much yeah but i'd have yeah. to re-listen to um good kid mad city because i haven't listened in a while um but yeah no it's my favorite right now like off the top of my head it's mm-hmm. not close but i do sp- section 80 has such a special place in my heart f your ethnicity that song yeah. is so good i used to love that song and he also I did do, the, like, the um on that in section 80 i forget what song it is he did that kanye part or he like stole a line from kanye song five star mm-mm, food for thought i know um, it is ridiculous what's that song you know what I'm talking about? Act Appalled by Kanye? Yeah, but, I don't but know he the song. uses it in, uh, uh, in Section 80. I think. Oh, I don't know. High pa- high Power. Okay. There's what it is. But, yo, really good. So, any other things you listen to? No, I'm joking. You can keep no. talking about Kendrick. I don't care. No, Kendrick's it was fire. just like, I liked the way he was like, he was going about every single lyric. And yeah. it just, it just made me like think of him in a different way. Mm-hmm. Like, that this dude's actually like a genius creatively. Yeah. And I didn't realize that before, even with To Pimp a Butterfly. Mm. Like, I don't know. To me, this was just like so different. Ooh. Did you hear the theory about, uh, is it Auntie Diaries or Aunt Diaries? Well, what's the theory? So, you know how he's talking about, you know, his aunt being transgender and then his cousin yeah, being yeah. trans. Um, and a lot of, well, there's I've seen that people think that he's, he's not actually telling a true story because he's using he there's a whole different like i didn't i don't thing. think he's telling a true story either. there's I'll a whole yeah there's a whole different it, thing but. around like like i don't understand the lore within kendrick things some people know like the lore and i was listening <laughs> kendrick say he's like some people are bringing out like things in my songs that i didn't even intend when writing it like there's certain um yeah things yeah. that are being in the creative process so there's like characters he has and everything like that but like um there's a old song that it kind of reflects how I forget what the song is, but there's an old rap song. It's not by Kendrick, obviously. It's I think '90s, and it talks about this guy's talking about the, um, this girl, and the whole song, the girl he's talking about is the rap game, and he's trying to you know, like be a part okay. of the rap game and everything. And so it was saying how they think Kendrick is kind of using it as a I guess it would be a metaphor um, for something it, um, that has to do with the rap game. That's what I, I'm saying. I didn't see. I didn't read much into it. Okay. That's what I saw. I hear that theory. I just don't think it's the case. The I th- don't think that the story is true. Or I, me neither. Or I think that um, it's sort of true. So like, I feel like he he may have actually he has like a transgender uh, yeah uncle, mm-hmm. but um, I don't think the part of him standing up at church is, and like yeah, talking yeah. to the pastor is true. Yeah. And I think, like, he's just using this whole thing as as an example. It was like he probably went to therapy or whatever, mm-hmm. and he, and he's talking about all this stuff and things that bothered him, and maybe this thing with um the girl who said the n word came up. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, he would say the f word all the time. Didn't think anything of it, and then someone brought it into perspective that it's literally the same exact thing. Yeah, um, you're just not connected with it because yeah. you don't care. Um. So I think he created a whole thing around that mm-hmm. um, to make to make people just understand it. Yeah, more. I think it's also to make people realize that, um, like you said, it's a with these words we have such a like, um, like emotional connection to a lot of these words. But it's like you just you don't be a hypocrite about it if you're calling about yeah. one thing, but then you're going to go ahead and say the other. Exactly. Um, but the, the thing in the song that's crazy, I would have to dive more into it is obviously he says, you know, Maggie with an F and, and then he, but he also <laughs> misgenders all the time. He's doing a lot of things in the song that society will like point at and be like, what are you doing? Why are you doing yeah, that? Yeah. And he's doing it to prove a point, Yeah. which is really cool. Well, you know, the thing that I thought was really cool too was 
he actually didn't say anything on like what side he was on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like he's just on human. He's it seemed like he was just on following what what God teaches. Yeah, and that's what I loved. Like <clears throat> he didn't say anything about oh she's like living in sin or anything like that. He didn't say that at all. Yeah, he was just like like aren't we supposed to love people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I loved that. Like that was just like the overall thing. And it has to do with grief too. Mm-hmm. Like united in grief because he could have the the feeling that okay maybe she was like molested as a kid or something like that yeah it could be like anything it could be like so much stuff so but he didn't like choose a side or anything he's just like saying Mm -hmm. like we can't like sit here like we can't sit here and and um condemn yeah condemn her Mm -hmm. um for like this whole thing when like you have things that you're struggling with too yeah it's like we're all united in grief like mm-hmm. it all kind of just brings back brings it back to that yeah like, intro track yeah and i think this is something that in our family we talk about a lot because you know we talk about the problems in the church um and the main problem with a lot of these issues especially with the lgbt community is focusing on the sin which we should be now don't get me wrong but we have to focus on loving individuals um and there's like such a disconnect with LGBT people not feeling loved by the church because, and it's not like because the church is loving and they're just not seeing it. It's because a lot of it is such big condemnation and shame that's being put on these people. So, you know, yeah, we talk about that a lot, you know, there's a way to be able to tackle both and have friendship and community. Um, and just be able to be on a personal level with, a lot of people in LGBT community, you know, and I have, so yeah, I don't know, but, um, it brings, it, it leads me to the question of, um, you know, with this whole album, obviously we were just like talking about, um, Kendrick's mental health Mm -hmm. and, and all that stuff. And this week I was, I had this question. What was it? The question was actually, before I get into that, I need to tell a story. Okay. I meant to start off the podcast like this, but on Saturday, it was actually a weird work day. Actually, like it wasn't weird, but there was a weird two moments. Okay. Back to back. I'm driving. It's raining outside, driving my van in a nice neighborhood. Mm -hmm. There's a group of like five girls anywhere from, they're probably like 14 to 17 years old. Okay. Driving by. I'm probably like 200 feet away from them, 300 feet. They're just like screaming. Woo. They're like cheering for me as I'm driving, like toward them. I start uncontrollably sneezing. (laughs) I sneeze like five times in a row. And I'm like, dude, I just want to stop (laughs) sneezing before I drive right in front of them. And they could see me (laughs) and it just kept coming. (laughs) <laughs> Dude, like, the allergies bro, are they're down cheering bad. for me and i'm just sneezing down bad it was so awkward all right did they see you 100 100 percent, they saw me i pull up to the house that i was driving to mm-hmm. get out the car bring my, my package up to the door or i'm walking up the driveway two girls sitting on like the bench like in front they have their dog like a german shepherd oh and i'm like walking i see the dog i see them they see me Um, so I'm just like, okay, this is a nice chill dog. Like, Mm -hmm. okay, it's fine. Still walking up to bring the package. I get close, drop the package off. Dog leaps out of the bench (laughs) and she's like, just don't worry. He's okay. He's friendly. And he says, he starts growling at me. Yeah. And she's like (laughs) super close and she's like, no, it's okay. He's just excited. Like, and I'm just like. Dude, what the heck? And we don't, we never grew up with dogs. No idea how dogs. So, are. yeah, we don't really know dogs too well. <laughs> so I'm like, when I hear a dog growling, I'm thinking, that thing is going to attack me. It's going to attack me. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm just like staring at it and it's like, and it's like stance. It looks like it's going to attack me. Mm-hmm. I turn around to walk away and it tries biting me. Where? In my butt. And you dodged it? It just missed. It just missed me. I thought you like went and a and little dodge. Yeah, and then I face it again, and it gets back in its stance. Like, like if I turn, I know it's gonna like. So what did the girls do? So it's it probably lasted only like fifteen seconds. It felt yeah, longer. But yeah, and I was like, 
Yo, can you just get your dog? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She bought, and then the, the one girl just was sitting the whole time. The other girl got up. And she's like, yeah, can you get the dog? <laughs> Bro, I'm like, are you dumb? Are you, you dumb? So pissed. You just got black out of nowhere. Yo, can you get your dog, yo? <laughs> yeah. Get and I'm dog? just like walking away just like... <laughs> Shaking my head. You turned the black on, bro. <laughs> bro the drum pissed me off. Nice. I'm like, just get your dog. Yo, facts. I mean, how many dog encounters have you had now? Didn't you get a lot. chased? I just did get, once, I've like, gotten mad chased far. twice. But the one was like mad far, right? Like you had to run all the way to the like wasn't it there, like, were, <laughs> there were there <laughs> were there were two that were like really bad. One, um, it was like in Southampton. So Southampton's like a place where it's like um really of- rural. Um a lot of yards. Yeah, the yards are like massive. So anyway, drop the package off like at the front door. And I don't understand why the dog just didn't come out earlier. <laughs> but it gets it jumps out when I get to the front door, just comes from the backyard and starts chasing me. And I ran so the fast. fastest I've ever ran in my life. And somehow got got, got back got to the car. Did that it- one believe wasn't even as bad but i felt it like i knew it was probably like this close like it was probably like this close to me dang um the other time um their front door was weird it was like the fence there was a fence it was like delivering to the side door mm. essentially it was like the garage was here like out front oh yeah, yeah. and then the side and that was where the front door was but then there was a gate here okay to so go through so i'm like okay whatever i'll just go through this thing i'm just chilling minding my own business the storm, the storm door is locked or shut. So I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm fine. I'm just chilling. I wasn't thinking anything of it. Drop the package Mistake. off. This massive behind dog. It was probably up to like my chest. Breaks down the door. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> it broke the door down and started chasing me out the yard. And I couldn't shut the door in time. Like I try, I tried. To, I was like going to try to shut the door. But it was so close to me. So I was like, I can't shut the door. I need to just get to the van. And it got, it just chased me out the yard, like okay. out the gate, chased me to the van. It was right behind me. I jump in the van and I had nothing to do. I just went to the left of the van. And I'm thinking this dog's going to hop in and, and kill me. <laughs> and it, dogs are freaking stupid. It did not get up. It didn't, it ran around. Oh. It, it ran saw it you went, go to the Yeah, other it side. saw me go like into the van, so it started going around the van. I'm like, you're an idiot, dog. Yo. You know what this makes me think of? <laughs> what? You number one, my brother is dramatic. Very dramatic. Okay. This makes me think of Sandlot. And you know how they think it's this big monster and all in all no. of Sandlot, you see the paw. It's like the size of this table hitting the and then you get to see the dog in the no. end, and it's just a regular I English prom- master. I promise you. That's Micah. No, that is not me. He said the dog <laughs> no. as high as your chest. It was huge, bro. No, bro. There's it no way. Huge. I don't believe you. It was huge. No, it was probably it was a big dog, but it's, that's It's big. the biggest dog I've ever seen in person. Really? I'm dead serious. It was huge. Bigger than Tyler's dog? Like his first dog. What yeah. Was it? It was it was gigantic, bro. I'm not kidding. And I'm not. Was it hairy? Was it because it had a whole bunch of fur, or was it just skinny and bit like no hair, just huge? Uh, it it didn't it didn't have it wasn't like super fluffy or anything like that. Dang. Do you know what kind of dog it was? Do you know dogs? You don't I don't know dogs. dogs but I really want to know because I've seen Great Danes. Right, they get big, but I wouldn't say chest big unless maybe so chest big, with its bro. paws up. With its paws up. Yeah, because you say it broke down the door. <laughs> so we freaking had to go. No, down. if it did that, it'd be like probably as tall as me. Like standing up, it was probably as tall as me. Yeah, I'm good off that, bro. That's it was I, huge. It was really freaking big. I wonder how fast you were running. Because that's like I life or death. No, you know I couldn't saying? even run that fast because like it was like a twisty, turny freaking. Oh, so the dog place. couldn't. How'd the dog not catch you then? I don't know. Because it was so big. It was it massive. Could, but it like, couldn't run. It was also, it came out at an angle. So it came out like this way. Yeah. And I already started running this way. Okay. So it had to turn and stuff. I feel like you could juke the crap out of a dog. You probably could. And I honestly need to start freaking punting these dogs. <laughs> Next time I see a girl and she lets her dog Attack out. You. 
attack you just and doesn't stop it i'm punting it bro even if it's friendly i don't know if it's friendly or not i'm a punting it amazon it's should have fault. in their terms of service for delivery if your dog tries to attack our drivers they will get punted i should start carrying a bat around <laughs> just <laughs> take it out of my pocket <laughs> Get one of those like sticks that look like they're this long, but then they extend like yeah. W that bro, that just remind. I just saw a video of a guy like pulling up. He was like in a McDonald's or something. Yeah, he gets his order, <laughs> and out of his pocket, he pulls a whole freaking coat out of his pocket. <laughs> wow. A whole winter coat. <laughs> I was like, how did that fit in his pocket? Bro, people are wild. I was like, "How is this Wait, possible?" He's just in a drive-through, or he's inside. Inside, and he just he gets he has his order. He puts it down, just <laughs> puts his <laughs> the grabs his order, walks out. I have to see that video. It was freaking to. comedy. Oh my gosh, it's um, too funny. But anyway, just needed to get that out of the way before we get into like the serious, serious conversation. Holy frick, I'm crying. <laughs> and this is a very serious question. How do we know? If we're lying now, not a blatant lie. Now, why'd I say blatant, 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 blatant lie? What do you mean? Okay. So now this could be maybe cause I'm partially indecisive. Okay. But I think it's, it goes, it's the same for a lot of people, which is you can get the way your brain works. Mm hmm. And let's say, okay, I'll use an analogy with candy. You start eating this candy, um, doing certain things. So maybe, um, actually, I'll use a good example. Um, like in biblical times, uh, Jews would read the Torah and they'd eat honey at the same time because mm -hmm. they associated um, scripture with something sweet. Like it mm -hmm. triggered something in their brain. It's like a whole mm -hmm. thing. And I think it's, it's the same thing for a lot of things in life. So I'll use an example of me reacting to Eden on my channel. Mm. As soon as I started reacting to Eden, I was getting more views and I started to like Eden and all that stuff. But it was like, Am I liking Eden because I actually genuinely like all these tracks that he's putting out? Mm. Or is it because, oh, this is doing well. But when I'm reacting to it, I'm like genuinely enjoying these songs. And it could partially be because I want, I want to enjoy these songs so that the people who are clicking on my videos are like, dang, he's really enjoying the song. And then they like, like they subscribe, they thing. comment. Yeah, subconsciously. Okay. But am I lying or am I being truthful? How do I know? Now, that's an example. That's just a small example, but that okay. applies to like just everything. So it could be maybe you were going through a dark time in your life. Yeah. Um, and then one day you started, um, maybe you felt you found a girl or something mm -hmm. and she made you feel a bit better. And now you've sort of fallen in love with this girl. Then 20 years later, you guys get a divorce. Yeah. <clears throat> Did you really love that girl That's or funny. was it something where you were just dark and she in a dark place and then she brought somehow brought you out of that place. Yeah. And you attached like your happiness to that thing without just realizing it, it was just a subconscious thing. Okay. Um, do you want me to answer? Okay, go. All right. I guess my answer was kind of what you just pointed at was going to be, does it last long? Like, do you still listen to Eden every now and then? Can you, and you enjoy it? You don't react to him anymore, but there's still songs you go back and listen to and you're like, this is a good song. Right? Yeah. So I think it has to do with time because there are immediate reactions we have to things and it could last for a while that, like the love thing yeah yeah but what I, I was just using that as an example yeah it wasn't necessarily the best example it was just like no, all the time but i'm saying even with the love thing mm -hmm. like um it didn't last it, it could be 20 years it could be 5 years it could be 10 years it could be a month right but it it didn't last or something went wrong um i don't know for me that's just not yeah but what if they never get the divorce then i would say it's you love that person. Yeah, but what if they actually don't? If they don't? 
get the divorce? What if they actually don't love the person? And they're just like completely settling. They live their life. Then they die. But do they know that? They might. But I feel like it. it's like all in your head. You know what I'm saying? Like it's all your perception and your, I guess, quote unquote, would be feeling how you feel about it. Okay. Right? But like I said, this is now this is an anecdotal. Um, yeah, of course situation is this like a subconscious this is, thing or you're knowledgeable like it's oh a, i love this girl she's b- helped me through so much like a subconscious thing so um dang i just had an example and it just slipped my mind um but i don't know i feel like it applies to like so much stuff but like wh- what would that be lying then um that's the, that only, is a good question. People only say they're lying to themselves after they acknowledge that yeah. what they're doing, they're doing, they did something that was foolish or they, they were aware that. Yeah. But that's after the fact. But yeah. When you're in the moment, you have no idea. Yeah. But the question is, how do we know if we're lying? I feel like you'd figure it out. And sometimes people never do. People. That's my to, thing. I feel like sometimes people never figure it out. And I feel like it could be about just so much stuff that we don't realize yeah but i think that's the i feel like that's just like the world we live in i think that's like happens with everybody at yeah. some point in life maybe not at like a grand scale yeah but there's always some point um where it happens the biggest example not even the biggest example an example would be um let me think i mean oh like something is good for you that it isn't good for you but you think it is and you know people oh, everyone goes through stuff like that yeah but sometimes there's science to point to it point you wrong or sometimes it's like you experience it and you're like oh well i was just wrong yeah but you could be completely genuine i feel but like you I won't think, figure it out until after you i you think figure it the out. human brain is like it's obviously like we just don't understand everything mm-hmm. but i think an aspect of it is a lot of the time if we're going through um, like we don't want to be sad and depressed. Like if we're feeling like if someone is like completely just over life and everything, mm-hmm. um, I think like they're kind of forcing themselves to be that way. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like the human brain, you kind of want to get out of it and you want to be happy and stuff. Mm-hmm. And subconsciously, you might attach yourself to something without realizing it. So, like, people saying, oh, this the, this song changed my life. Or mm-hmm. they attach themselves to a certain religion when they go through a dark time. Mm-hmm. And are like, oh, uh, God brought me. Um, and and he just, he made me happy. Just, like, he brought mm-hmm. me out of that dark place. Yeah. Um, and I think, like, part of it is your your mind your body wants to get out of that place Mm -hmm. um and it's attaching itself to different things to bring yourself out of it without you even realizing it it's just a completely like Mm -hmm. subconscious thing yeah i don't know i think that's what humans just always do but i wouldn't call it lying because i feel like lying (sighs) lying comes with kind of an awareness and if you're unaware of something, yeah, yeah, that's why I said it always is after the fact. You're like, oh, I was lying to myself. Yeah. So it's like something that's really weird. But um, yeah, I have no idea. I have like no comment. But I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Like, but to me, I'm just like, I think that's just how it, things work. Yeah, that's what I'm people. saying. Yeah. Like it happens to everyone. You know, especially when you're growing up. Um, what is like an example? Like Kendrick talked about it. You know, having a <laughs> going back to Kendrick this is perfect having something that happened to him so young like be in his mind and he might not even think about it all the time but it's something he thinks about or just how he treats a certain situation way in the future mm-hmm. so it's like how things affect us always how things are constantly every experience we have every thing that's in our brain we actually don't ever forget and I think there was some type of study that was like that it was like the human mind is, is crazy that like we actually don't forget anything because yeah, that's everything what I think. has a single has an effect on you. Every single thing that you experience has an effect on you. Yeah. 
So, and it could go into like a positive way or a negative way where we end up lying to ourselves or yeah. tricking ourselves. But I, I, there's also like, you know, with other things like with animals and probably like, there's probably tests. They have probably done plenty of studies with this, like, mm-hmm. um, like how you train dogs or just, um, mm-hmm. any sort of animal, um, you kind of like reward them with like a treat mm-hmm. to do certain tasks Yeah, and you punish them for things that they did wrong. Mm hmm. So it could be certain things that are just like molded into us, into our subconscious that we don't even like, that we can't even comprehend exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. So, um, and it could be like an extreme example, like um, this person was sitting on, when they were like really young, they were just chilling on the couch, mm-hmm. um, watching TV, and there's like a mess on the floor or something. And their dad comes in the room and smacks them mm-hmm. and is like, you're watching TV when, there's a, when there's a mess here. Yeah. And then they grow up through life and they can never just sit and rest. Mm-hmm. They're always just anxious and they're like, oh, I have to do this. I have to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, because that, that thing affected them, even though they don't even remember that thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that could and there that could be with rewards as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was just, I don't know, I was listening to something. Oh, like, sorry. You, no, you so I'm going. just like saying like, is that person actually them? Yes. Or is that, is since that thing is what, what caused that, and maybe they can, if they identified that and like tried to, to fight it, then they, they could like work with it and change it. Because mm. that, that thing might not actually be them. That might be the lie. Mm. Um, but they just don't realize it's a lie. Yeah. I guess my perspective would be, um, <clears throat> I mean, from the, from a biblical perspective, it would be like humans were called to do certain things and, um, to follow God. And if there's like our, our sin is what's blocking us, but I wouldn't say, um, so I would say, yeah, it would be if you're getting anxious and stuff about something that you don't even remember and you can't sit still there's there's fixable that's fixable though i think at least like there's people that do therapy but what if it's not but there's people that do like therapy and stuff and they have no idea why they're a certain way and if it's not fixable then you figure out a way to live with it yeah i, I like I, I don't think that i just think about it from such a like simple perspective i don't try i it's because this is a super deep thing yeah like this is really deep but to me i'm just like you find ways to live with it, like healthy ways to, to cope with it. Um, cause everyone has anxieties, right? Um, from an anxiety standpoint, it's like, there's so many people that figured out and know how to cope with their anxiety and move on and live and be able to live. So, yeah, I don't know for me. Um, peace with God. That's like the biggest thing. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Interesting though very very interesting well yeah i mean i a lot of deep thinker bro i don't think like you (laughs) i don't like to me i don't care i know but like i could understand it's why it's like but i feel like these are questions that will never be able to be answered yeah see i don't like that i don't like thinking about something that can't be answered because to me that just doesn't matter then you know what i'm saying well i feel like you can Uh, there might be an answer to it and maybe talking about it, you can, and maybe the answer is different for everybody. It could, yeah. So it could be that. the the base question of how do we know if we're lying, mm-hmm. maybe the answer for me is different than the answer for you. Uh-huh. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But I don't know. No, I, I'm speaking from like, um, like just what I go through. Yeah, definitely. You know so, what's weird? You know, I was actually thinking, <clears throat> maybe you like your anxieties and stuff like you said what if it is that really you what if it is like just like what you're going through it's just you it's part of your life like something you go through is just what you are yeah but like if this is actually really me then it freaking sucks like (laughs) yeah but like you you, we know that just it sucks it sucks being on earth (laughs) you know you know the the perspective is we all suck you know? Yeah, but I think there's like everyone has their own struggles and stuff. Mm-hmm. But going into a grocery store and freaking 
feeling like everyone's staring at you for no reason mm-hmm. is like that's not fun like no, that, that sucks that does suck but like how that makes you feel or what like that feels like to you someone could get that same feeling from something completely different yeah but like what i i can't speak from personal cause no because they'll say things like oh i have like i have stage fright or something it could be stage fright but that's like when are you on a stage yeah like, well i'm just saying from like how our brains react like that chemical reaction you get in your brain the anxiety that happens when you when you go into a store someone could get from literally anything yeah but I'm, well. I'm just using it as an example yeah I'm, yeah like, i know you are but i'm just saying like i think everyone's life sucks to an extent because all humans suck you I, think so i think all humans suck yeah I mean, like, there's different perspectives from it, but, like, I think that people have things a lot worse than others. For sure. But, like, and it, it could be worse in different ways. I mean, um, there's a base level of suck, and then there's there's levels, I would say, but it's, I, it's, I don't like saying that, like, um, I don't know. It makes it sound weird. And it makes some people's problems sound less significant when you're saying other people have it worse than you. Like sometimes you need that, but other times it's like what someone's going through, it may not seem like a big deal, but to them it's a really big deal. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, for sure. So like I mean, objectively, when, yeah, I think other people have it worse than others yeah. in the world because it's the world we live in. But I think like from a personal perspective, yeah, I think... Thing. Um, yeah, everything's relative for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. But when you look, when, um, Lana Rhodes went on Bradley Martin's podcast mm-hmm. and she was talking about her sister. Yeah. And that's that crazy. she that won't, crazy. she can't even respond to you anymore. She said sometimes like, yes or yes, like, but that's it. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Like that's insane. Mm-hmm. Um, and the fact that she got to that point is wild, but it's crazy because it's like, her and Lana essentially went through, you know, similar things. Sim- they had similar paths. Yeah. And obviously, like, like Lana Rhodes, she um, struggles with her own stuff. But mm-hmm. then you compare her to her sister, and it's just like... Yeah, she's like, wow. Yeah, she so it's like, you that. know this person has it worse than Lana. Yeah, for sure. Um, now, you could question it, like, is it to her own doing? Yeah. You could. So... Or may, or the way that she's wired, mm. and I think it's a mixture of both. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think experience is like a a really big proponent of, um, because like it's not only just experience because her and Lana could have experienced the same thing, but it's also your pers- like how yeah you, exactly how yeah. you go through that experience. Well, remember when being a, sorry, individual. no, you go, you go. remember when Vera was telling that story. Vera is our sister, mm-hmm. um, but she told Shout that story of elisha like yelling at dad and then like running out the house or whatever yeah. and veer started laughing yeah, yeah and i was sitting there just like it's not funny yeah it's, it's not, not funny, funny. Yeah, yeah yeah like i don't remember that at all <laughs> yeah but that's two different but it's comp- it's the same exact thing it's same experience Vera was laughing yeah. and i was like scared yeah 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 definitely um <laughs> winter's at our feet you might be able to see her on camera um no, but I guess I don't know. What what the heck? She just wants all the attention right now. Did she get fed? I don't know. What time is it? Seven fifteen. Dad should have fed her. If oh. not, then she's hungry. Um. No, I think you know. I don't. We're sort of talking in circles. I'm, <laughs> I i do not want to like. I'm not like trying to complain or anything. I was no, just like saying like. I don't think you're complaining. I just from I like I said my perspective. It's kind of like every the world sucks <laughs> and people go through it and i see that people go through it worse than me like i am a person i don't struggle with anxieties like i've gotten depressed but i've always been encouraged by everyone around me and i also have this thing of like just if someone asks me to go do something i'll like nathan you want to go here i hate saying no I do hate saying no. Nathan, you want to hang out? Like when Kai asked me to do something, I, so like that's what propels me to get out 
if I ever am depressed. So I don't struggle with those things. So I have a really like hard prime, excuse me, hard time connecting with people that really struggle with mental illness. Um, so yeah, I like talking to people about it for sure. Yeah. Um, it's crazy how different we are though. Cause we've gone through similar lives. You yeah. Know? You didn't, we're only three years. I apart. just wish that I could like figure out exactly what happened. What chain? Yeah. Like what sort of triggered it? Because I have no OC, idea. Little OCD. Winter. <laughs> Come here. She's you know, Well, I don't know. I don't think it's OC. I don't think it's OCD. No. Um, I'll tell the story real quick. I, I told you this before. Yeah. But yeah. um, when I was in like kindergarten, yeah. so when I was a a young kid, I would constantly be constipated, <laughs> and I hated pooping. Um. Well, yeah. What was the reason? I just didn't like the feeling. Okay. Um. So I would go like a week straight just not pooping it's crazy that you remember it yeah i can't remember a single thing from like that either. um and then so one day um in school i probably like over a week long of just holding it in i needed to go so bad yeah and so i was like okay i need to go to the bathroom told the teacher you know did my business i'm just in the stall mm-hmm. two kids came in i don't know how old they were or whatever yeah instantly they're like Yo, it stinks in here. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and my Micah. immediate reaction was be as quiet as possible. Mm-hmm. Don't say anything. And I I can't leave until After they everyone leave. is gone. And I don't want anyone to know that it was the you. smell came from me. Yeah, yeah. Whether it was those kids or anybody. Mm-hmm. So I literally waited in there. I don't know how long. Mm. Um, But... It was a really long time. And eventually I was like, okay, I don't think anyone's in here. Probably was like 20, 30 yeah. minutes that went by. And then I went out. Yeah. Um, But I was talking to KJ about that because I was like trying to describe my first memory of anxiety and maybe like something that triggered it. So I was thinking that that is what triggered it. Yeah. And this is kindergarten. Yeah. yeah. And KJ was like, no, that wasn't like the trigger there was something else before that that was the trigger and yeah. that's your resp- and that made you respond to that situation in, that, in way. that way yeah so i'm like dude what the heck happened like why yeah i mean it could also be from just viewing uh, people around you like mom getting anxious because you know the type yeah. of person mom is because the more i grow up the more i'm like dude we're we're so much like mom like we're just getting more and more like mom and dad. It's crazy, <laughs> but <laughs> just little little things, bro. Little things. I can't even think of an example, but I just no. I just feel I, it. Well, I think I'm like mom, like the most. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, that's such a funny story. Do you ever do the lift the leg strat when you're in the bathroom yeah. and someone walks in, you just <laughs> yeah. so they can't see your feet, bro? <laughs> I have done that. I've done that before too. Um, don't want anybody to see me. But no, I guess like that describes it more too is like, I think it has to do with like flaws and stuff. Mm, like could be instantly when I'm around people, I think I I just feel like, oh, people are going to notice like everything wrong about me. Really? Yeah. So, um, and I try not like to do it. Uh, I just try not to do it, but naturally I want to like project an image of like, a self-confident good at this thing good at that thing yeah who you want to be not even necessarily who i want to be but like instead of that like i don't want them to notice my flaws so i'm like okay look i can sing a little bit i can play guitar i can play some sports or something like that Mm -hmm. um and that's just naturally what i want to do so that they're probably so that they're not seeing my flaws Mm -hmm. i think that's everybody though when you meet somebody but i think you think about it more like i think but i think about it to the furthest extent which yeah. is when i go into a grocery store yeah that's immediately my thought without me realizing it mm-hmm. yeah and like these people don't know me and i'm seeing them for two seconds mm-hmm. yeah that's so interesting well maybe one day you could f- get the memory of like a f- something I that, just, it's not gonna happen that trigger you don't think so i don't think it's gonna happen yeah I don't know, but it's fine. Yeah. I think I have a good ability. I don't shut my mind off, but I'm just like, I just go, I just do something. I don't think at like, I feel like you're I don't want to say deep thinker, maybe an overthinker. Like you think about every single thing. Yeah. In every single situation. Me, 
like I it was always just like gonna go to the store, go to the store. I'm gonna do this, go do this. Yeah, gonna do this, go do this. Um, so I think it was just maybe I grew up just more unaware of self, and I was just con. I maybe it could have be being the youngest a more confidence thing, but I was just didn't really. I, I'm I wasn't aware of myself. Like, uh, what is what do we say? No shame, no shame at all. Like I'll just yeah. do whatever. That's how I felt, and that's how I still feel. So it's like the weird. Uh, yeah, I guess, and I'm like I'm hyper aware. Yeah. So and like I just remember like things like growing up like, um, let's say, with like McDonald's orders and stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I would always like get like the minimum thing, mm-hmm. like yeah, two McChickens. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't. I literally like two McChickens, and then like cookies or something like that. My order would be like three bucks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you would get something that's like, like 10, 10 nugget. It, yeah. It'd be like ten dollars. Yeah. And in my head, I'm like dude like he's being like why is he spending all of mom and dad's money like this yeah like in some like mom and dad are rich no (laughs) no you didn't even like think about it no it's like i just got but my immediately thought is like i don't want them to spend all this money on me yeah i wonder i think there has to be something or it's just how you're wired like everyone's different you know everyone goes through stuff yeah but i feel like that's not who i'm actually supposed to be yeah like i think like me being an overthinker and being like anxious, like, yeah, part of that is wired. Yeah. But I don't think, um, you know, how far and like how it's hard going. it is. Mm-hmm. I don't think that that part is actually me. Yeah. It could be like not really a perversion, but like over a gift that you have, which is your creativity and your thinking has also turned into the biggest like thing that's holding you back because of just humanity and we suck <laughs> but yeah, you know what maybe. i'm saying yeah because it's like it's such a gift that you have that you think um about like everything and that you you actually do think about um like you care you definitely care like you should see micah's gift giving micah is the best at giving gifts by the way um to like giving he gifts. thinks about he thinks about it and he gets you the best gift but i think that's with everything like his music he thinks about every lyric um you're every, creative <laughs> every line that i write yeah like it's probably thought out yeah crazy but i'm saying that's such a big gift but i think our biggest gifts could also be big flaws that we have yeah because of our sin and because of just us being human um like my biggest gift would probably or not biggest gift but i'm I'm likable. I'm personable. I love talking to people. I love people. Um, and I'm very confident. Yeah, what is your biggest downfall? I, I'm a little too confident sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> fake humble. A little bit fake humble. Um, that might be it. I don't know. I'm not saying. There's like a lot of things um, I would say are my biggest downfall. Number one, I have this weird thing of like I – wanted everybody to like me because i grew up everyone liked me and then i realized there's not people that are gonna like me and part of me was like i don't care it's whatever but part of me also really deeply cared that someone didn't like me so that's one of the things i like having everybody like me so it gets to a point of being a people pleaser i'm a very big people pleaser which sucks sometimes i've been trying to get better at that because i know you know i i choose me i'm sorry (laughs) i choose me i'm sorry um so that's probably the biggest thing. People pleaser. Um, I try and get everybody to like me. And sometimes I have to realize like, yo, people aren't going to like me and I don't have to like everybody. There's also this thing I have that I have to like everybody, which I know I have to love everybody, but it doesn't mean I'm going to like everybody. You know, it's just yeah. how it is. It's just how life is. I could still love someone in choice and action and not like them. Yeah. And there's a difference. So that's probably it. That's a big downfall. Really big. Because I'll do stuff that I don't want to do. And I hate it. Someone yeah. asked me to do a task and I don't want to do it, <laughs> but I'm like, oh, if I say no, like mom asked me to do something the other day. I, I know it's my mom. I get it. But it was the worst timing for me to do something for her. And I couldn't say no. I couldn't. So being able to not say no sucks. Yeah. No, I get that for sure. Yeah. Um, I don't know how long we've been going for. A minute. Like we got a movie to for see. A while, we got we to right? go see Doctor Strange. It's been like over now. There's actually Easy. like still like so much that we could talk about because this Next type time. of conversation kind of just can go into so many different areas. For sure. Um, 
but who in the comments yo people tell us you know what you're going through um you know, it could be a struggle. It could be your biggest downfall, like me. I, I people please. Mike anxiety. He overthinks. Um, so yeah, we go through it, definitely. Yeah. So and now I'm in like the freaking deep thinking right now. <laughs> so yeah. when I'm in this stage, I'm freaking. Yeah. Well, the good thing is, is that like, I don't want to have a public perception if even if this like gets bigger, this podcast of people thinking we're this amazing people and we're good and we're perfect because we're not. We're not good at all. We suck. And we're not perfect. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, worst brothers on the. No, <laughs> you should see my room and tell me I'm. That, perfect. I was actually literally <laughs> just gonna bring that up because you should see my room when I mentioned biggest downfall. <laughs> me, I'm not clean or or. The thing is, in my head, I feel so organized. Outwardly, I can't organize anything. Yeah. But like, you need I to pla- freaking clean your. I room, plan. Bro. I'm really good at planning things out in my head, and just. Never, I don't do anything else. You create the realities in your head so you feel comfortable. You think that's what it is? Mm-hmm. Probably. I'll be like, I'm going to do this. I'm so excited. Like today I was just thinking, I'm quitting soda. Let's be real. That's the, um, that's like the lying to yourself thing too. That goes back to that without realizing that you're lying. I'm quitting soda, there, guys. There, <laughs> there have been times where I felt like I was really talkative in a certain situation. And then you look back. And then like someone with their perception is oh this dude didn't never talks <laughs> he's so but quiet. in my head mm-hmm. i truly believed like i was like talking a lot and stuff yeah hmm. that's interesting yeah so it's like you create these realities in your head and mm-hmm. they may or may not be true interesting you know what i'm thinking of old movie with jim carrey the truman show you ever heard of it i've heard of it i don't think it, i've seen it do you know what it's about no it's basically this guy he lived his whole life in a TV show and he had no idea and he was the main character of a TV show and there's things that are around him that are like put and like placed and he's yeah. just he's just living life and everything's being altered and being changed and he does and he's starting to find out I didn't watch the I started mm. and I fell asleep but it seems like a good movie um but it just made me idea. think of that yeah it seems like a really cool idea yeah but like your own reality is like so weird yeah to think about yeah because like there are people who are who are who go so far with it without realizing it Mm -hmm. like a lot of people with add Mm -hmm. they'll remember things completely different yeah and they'll forget things Mm -hmm. like huge things that happen they'll just completely forget it but But they just don't realize that it happens yeah yeah it's it's pretty crazy we're just wired different everybody it's yeah but the thing is is like everybody's wired i think different but there's you could still relate to so many people that go through things that you go through and um, yeah i don't i don't know if you've if you have a friend that goes through what you go through exactly probably not (laughs) no (laughs) not at all (laughs) no but there's definitely people out there that do yeah yeah um so yeah yeah well when i did the personality type too yeah you're like i was an inf p t yeah and reading the description it was like it's one percent of the population and it was like saying how you feel completely isolated Mm -hmm. and that you can't really relate to people much Mm -hmm. at all yeah and i'm like and it's saying everything and i'm like dude this is exactly me Mm -hmm. like completely and i guess since it's like so rare that it's it feels like just really isolating yeah but everyone who has that personality type feels that way interesting to think how how much is one percent of the whole population though think about how many people um have that personality type it's like uh well we think about eight billion people so one percent of eight billion yeah 80 million 80 million yeah i mean that's like i don't know 80 million yeah um it's just crazy to think i was talking to what was it? I was talking to Kai about this. this is kind of random, but we were talking about people across the earth having completely different lives than us. Yeah. Um, but I was like, we treat people that don't speak the same language as us or that don't, yeah, that don't speak the same language as us or have a different life as if they're like completely different and not human. But I'm like, those people probably think the exact they same do, way yeah. you think. 
And it's actually crazy to think about because we disconnect ourselves from like, especially if you look at like people from India and you're like, oh, I, I, I wonder what they're thinking in this situation. It's probably like, they probably think just like how we think. Exactly. But like they like, have anxieties. They have things that they go through. And it's yeah. like, you could look at their lives as like, dang, their lives suck. And they probably they think, don't. They don't. But there's things in their life that they subjectively like, dang, this sucks. Yeah, you know? exactly. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, dang, what was I about to freaking say? Hey, what were you? I kind of went off topic. No, no, no. You're good. You're you're fine. I need more water. Uh, more water. No, it's okay. Okay. We're okay. going to be done. We're about to be done. Dude, oh, I forget it. it was so good. It was so good. <laughs> but maybe just not good enough. Maybe not. That's why it's not in your head anymore. <sighs> Frick, dude. All right. Can we wrap up? We have to go to the movies, bro. Yeah, we do. We got to go. I it's know. Eight. It's I think, 30. See, this is where I think like I low-key do have some sort of OCD. Yeah. Because my now literally all I can think about is this and all I want to talk about is this. Well, we can. <laughs> we got to go. So, okay. Anyway, thank you guys for tuning into the podcast. I don't thank know how long this was. Long. Um, sure. But this was a good conversation. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, if you made it here, thank you so much. Yeah. Awesome. Ask uh, us questions. Yeah. Please. Ask us questions in the comments. Leave your thoughts. Like the video. Share. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Peace.